Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again to the detour. And geez, we've got a cracking episode for you. We've been a bit delayed. We'd normally go live probably a week ago, but we held off, didn't we, John? Because it doesn't get any bigger than the guest that we've got, <laughs> Jai Henley, the winner of the Giro. He's joined us. Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> bloody sensational. Yes. Yeah. Well, welcome uh, on board the detour, mate. You've been on it before. Uh, but uh, under not quite as good a circumstances, I mean, we had you on after you'd ran second in the in, in the Giro a couple of years ago, uh, and um, but now we can celebrate uh, big time. So uh, yeah, sensational, mate. And I know you've had a week's holiday, mainly in Italy, I think. But uh, so you can tell us about that. So what's it been like in, in this uh, cra- crazy week and a half? Nearly two weeks now. Yeah, well, well, first of all, thanks for having me on the on the pod. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, crazy, been been pretty crazy and uh, pretty full on actually since yeah, actually since I crossed the, the line in the TT, like that whole day was a bit of a bit of a whirlwind roller coaster, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just actually at a holiday booked straight after the race which i had organized before the race and that was in italy so probably not the the smartest idea but actually it was uh, <laughs> really nice um just with my girlfriend for uh, i think just over a week in italy so yeah it was really really nice just to like shut it down for a bit after the race um and just not touch the bike at all i love that story where you went to that famous uh, museum that you know, uh, Italian Giro uh, mausoleum almost uh, of cycling. You paid to go in, and then the you photo. gave them, <laughs> and then you gave them one of your pink jerseys. Now, how how great was that? A beautiful story. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was really nice. We were actually staying uh, on Lake Como in the town at the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the Gazalo. So this museum is on top of the on top of the gazalo the climb they use in lombardia and uh yeah it's a really special place you know i went there when i was a teenager in 2014 i think when we were uh traveling around italy and racing and stuff and uh yeah it's just i don't know if you guys have ever been in there but it's just awesome like if you're a if you're a you know cycling fan and you appreciate like all the all the history and yeah, and everything about cycling, basically, then it's just really cool. They've got so much stuff in there. And, uh, yeah, I remember actually looking at the that, that setup with all the pink jerseys in there, and I remember looking at that just thinking, like, man, that's pretty sick because they've got, <laughs> they've got you know, all the – I don't think it's every single year, but it's, like, really a lot uh, of, of the jerseys from, like, most years. And you just see, like, the – what what like it what what the original sort of looked like the original pink jersey and then it goes you know through the years and you can just see like the the jersey changing from like the old wool to you know what it is now it's like a tiny little like <laughs> jersey yeah. from, from back in my day although I never wore the pink jersey but uh, I'll tell you, tell you one thing that hasn't changed I noticed the little cards that you take. Yeah, you know, that you carry with you in your back pocket. That have got the, the the profile of the stage and all the information. Yeah. It's still exactly the same as when I rode 19, 1981. So that's one thing yeah. that hasn't changed. Yeah, pretty cool. Eh? I just yeah. love the fact that you paid to get in. Like even when, even winning yeah, the yeah. Giro, it's like, no, nah, mate, fifteen euro. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, you know, like not different to anyone else you know so it's like uh, you're, a humble man. Cool, you're a humble no, man that, no that yeah. is really cool that was a really really smart way to do it actually but if it was yeah. me i wouldn't have i would have said yeah, hey but- hey <laughs> you would have had about 50 people would you mate drag him in dan i know you. <laughs> That's yeah, right. it, was, it was pretty funny though because yeah we there's also a church next to the museum and it's like a sort of bike church it's also really cool so we went in there and yeah, luckily it wasn't too busy, and and then we went into the museum, and I thought like, I mean, I was also wearing sunglasses, but uh, yeah, they, you know, the ladies at reception had like no idea who I was, which was cool, and then 
you know, we had a look around the museum and I sort of had the idea like it'd be pretty sweet if I gave them a jersey and I had a jersey in my suitcase in the in the car we had. So yeah, I just thought like that'd be pretty sweet if I could give them a jersey and then they could, you know, hang it up on the wall. Um and yeah, I went out, got the jersey. They still had no idea. And then I came in with the jersey, they still had no idea. And then <laughs> oh, I showed them the jersey and uh and they were like, Whoa. <laughs> then they started, Who, oh, where'd you pinch this yeah. from? <laughs> you know that guy. That's amazing. <laughs> um, oh, wonderful story. And then and then yeah, they were like really stoked and you know they got me to sign it and then they said like oh you know hang it on hang it on the wall and we'll get some photos and stuff and and then yeah i spoke with the they called up the museum director he wasn't in but i spoke with him on the phone and he was lovely and yeah it was just it was just really cool you know and i think i think the museum has also been i don't know struggling a bit since uh covid for the past couple years so it was I don't know. It was nice that the museum also got like the exposure and stuff because, like I said, it's a really special place. And yeah, yeah, I think if anyone who's into cycling should definitely visit it. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of live comments. The switchboard is lit up more than any (laughs) other show. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Jason Cruz says, Congratulations, Joe. What a ride. Well done on also, also overcoming 2021 shows. True Aussie grit. Um, it is it is an unbelievable story, mate. I mean, it was a tough 2021 for yourself. Um, mm. Obviously, you went into the race, you know, you had a clear focus, you had a goal, but um, the way it all sort of panned out in the end, is it still looking back on hard to sort of digest what actually happened? Uh, yeah, like, a, yeah, the, especially the last week, because the last week, it, uh, it just it just goes so fast. Like it feels, it feels like you, you race and then the race finishes. And then, you know, before you know it, you're back on the bike again, the next day racing again. Like it's, Mm. it's just in fast forward, you know, and it's really hard to like, just take in everything that's going on. You're also really tired. So you're not, you know, your brain isn't functioning at like a (laughs) hundred percent. Well, for me anyway. (laughs) And uh, yeah, it just, it, it's just really a lot of like, I don't know, just a lot to take in. And I think that's why it was nice to just have like a week of doing nothing, oh, like just a holiday, you know, not riding and just, you know, really soaking everything in. And uh, yeah, I mean, I still, I, I still like, every, yeah, when I think about it now, it just like makes me smile, you know, I just still can't believe it. Like, <laughs> It's just crazy, <laughs> really yeah, crazy. Was Look, I was very fortunate to to be there uh, on the ground, in the bubble, as they say, and to get you on many of the mornings, which was just sensational. You always uh, appreciate the time you, you gave us. It was a lot of fun. Um, but the first day, actually, but the day before it started, when the team presentation, I was in the place where you weren't supposed to do any interviews, but you came straight over. You said, okay, John, you come over and start. How are you going, mate? Haven't been in a while. We were having a good yap. And my mate Vaz said, Vazzy, turn your camera on. Or his phone on, which it was. <laughs> uh, and we started uh, 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 recording it, which we showed on the detour on SBS as well. But then this woman came running over. Hey, yeah. you're not supposed to be here. And got, yeah, I, got yeah. told, I got into trouble. <laughs> got an absolute roasting. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> but the most amazing part of John's journey was the fact that there was that one grab that he got that has gone viral. And I want to play a clip. <laughs> Uh, Jai is obviously a rock star now. He's on the project. Uh, you haven't seen this, Ify, but you're part of it as well, mate. Let's have a look. So I'll be honest. I'm not as across the technical details of tackling stage 15 at the Jello like, like you are. But let's have, let's have a listen at your expertise here. We're really uh, not here to put socks on centipedes, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> now, are the centipedes also cyclists in this scenario? And, and if so, how many wheels are on the bike? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just two. But, uh, yeah, I had a fun time explaining to the Euro guys what that one meant. Was that, was that your way of saying we're not here to kiss spiders? Oh, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, we're viral. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's good. Viral. 
<laughs> it was the one day I didn't have the SBS sock on because I got into trouble for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we took it off for a couple of days and we, we put oh, it back on anyway. But yeah, that was, a, that was a great start. <laughs> but the thing that um, really stood out with those interviews, Joy, is just how relaxed you were throughout the whole race, you know? And even you flash back to the year that Cadell Evans won the Tour de France. That was the thing that everyone was saying is how relaxed he, he was throughout the race when – but you're not traditionally like a stress head. We know that. But how important is that? Because your team, you know, put in such an amazing effort. It was very clear that you were a guy that they wanted to ride for. You know, you must have kept that group sort of calm, relaxed, you know, the Aussie nature. But um, how important was that over a three-week race as a leader to keep the group sort of relaxed and focused and, and try and minimise stress? Yeah, I mean, massive, you know. Like I've been, uh, I don't know. I've been on both ends of the of the stick there. Like I've been a domestic riding for guys in Grand Tours, and then yeah, I've also been a leader. So it's like, I don't know. I really just tried to take the experience that I learned when I was a a domestic. You know, like what what I would what I would like in a leader. You know, that's what I tried to be or try to do. So it's like. I think if if you're riding for someone who's calm and and you know appreciates what what all the guys do, which, which I which I did, then yeah, I mean as long as your leader's giving it everything every day and and you're if you're a domestic and you can see that, then you know I think then it's perfect, you know. So that's really just like what I what I try to do in a grand tour anyway. I think if you keep keep calm as you can and. Uh, yeah just you know you do all the work that you can before and then whatever happens in the race happens and yeah it's like that you 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 actually did that very very well because we've got to remember that bora had never been on the podium of a grand tour you know they had all those great years when they were you know supporting peter sagan winning green jerseys winning lots of big bike races world championships and so on but They'd never been on the podium in a Grand Tour. So naturally, the stress as the, the the Tour went on, especially towards that last week, people were getting nervous. But you were calming things down. And I was getting that from inside. I had my inside sources at your team. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, Media and, manager. <laughs> not saying who they were. But, yeah, yeah the, I was getting the reports that you were the one calming everyone down. And, and everyone respected that. It was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, yeah, thanks. No, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was also just like a really nice team to be a part of, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I really had the feeling like every, every person who was involved in, in the race for our team was a hundred percent behind and behind everyone and committed. And, you know, you could just tell that everyone was really doing their best to help the team. And yeah, when it's like that, you can't ask for much more, you know? And yeah, it was just, it was just really special. Like you, you don't really get that uh, too often, I would say. And uh, yeah, it was just really cool to be a part of. I've got a heap of live comments. I'll just keep uh, punching through them because I think yeah, yeah, to get involved. Sure. Yeah. Peter says, woohoo, wait, way to go, Joy. <laughs> keep a lid on it, Iffy. Uh, Matt <laughs> Borton says, congratulations, Joy. You did Australia proud and you finished off an amazing team effort. The skull says he's still smiling and good on him. Uh, Pete also wants to know: you're a Dockers or an Eagles fan? Oh, mate, yeah. I'll be honest; I'm not really into AFL. Probably prefer, probably prefer rugby union, to be honest, mate. Yeah, right. More of a rugby well, that... guy. Yeah, I actually used to play when I was a, when I was a kid. Didn't didn't last long, thankfully. The yeah. career, but yeah. She's lucky you didn't answer because you would have split the state straight up the middle there, uh, <laughs> Dockers or Eagles. Uh, Patricia says, great gesture and a great achievement. Wendy, super fan. Hi, guys. Congrats, Jai. Love watching you. Was yelling at the screen for you. Andy Matthews oh. says, congrats, Jai. I just love how relaxed you seem throughout the last week. Just awesome. Alan Davis, chapeau, Jai. Profoundly proud of you. Congratulations, mate. Did you get many of the guys throughout the race, particularly the Aussie contingent coming up going, mate, we're all cheering for you. Come on, you know, giving you that support. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was also really cool. It wasn't – actually, it wasn't just the Aussie guys. You know, there were a lot of guys in the race who were, like, coming mm. up and saying, yeah, actually, on this stage 20, quite a few guys came up to me and said, like, man, I hope you, 
I hope you get get it done today, <laughs> basically, <laughs> which is pretty cool. You know, when you got like multiple guys all on different teams, different nationalities, like coming up and saying like, "Oh man, you know, I hope you win," or "Good luck for today," or ah, it's it's just really nice. And yeah, I mean, there weren't so many Aussie guys at the race compared to, well, I don't know, two years ago there was quite a lot, but uh, yeah, it's always nice when there's Aussie guys there, and uh, you know, you can just shoot the breeze and yeah it's it's really cool i always try and like chat with with whoever's there from oz in a race and uh yeah it was pretty nice man <laughs> well I, I i tell you something on the saturday and the panorama day you had just crossed the line matter of fact i think carapaz had just crossed the line and that gap was there i got a text from richie port and he, if seriously, only seconds after, he must have been sitting back because, you know, as we know, Richie had to pull out a few days before. And he said, Tell Jerry he's got to send that pink Fiat to uh, to Perth. Every because everything in his fleet of cars he's got an old a pink Fiat like uh, that was given to him. And he said to, to <laughs> like Richie, a Fiat 500, yeah. Yeah, Fiat 500, pink. <laughs> and uh, evidently he said to, to, to Richie one day, if he wins the Giro, he'd, send it, he'd give it to him. But I said to Jerry, he said, yeah, but that was before I started my own team. I can't really be giving someone from another team uh, a car. So you missed out on the, on the big Fiat. But I've got to tell you, Jerry, super, super proud. Of course, he wanted uh, yeah, Simon to win, but that didn't happen. But he yeah. was so over the moon. He said, when I'm talking to you, Please congratulate him uh, uh, for him because he feels uh, a connection because of those well, early days. Got, look at this classic photo, yeah. the old Mitchelson and Scott days <laughs> with Dave Davo. Sanders. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dave Sanders when you won in, in China. It was a, a great win. I was talking to Davo just the other day and he was raving about how special that win was. And there was a few world uh, tour pros and everything over racing in China at that time. And you gave him all the... Uh, uh, you said goodbye to him up the big climb, which was a fantastic ride. So, but uh, yeah, anyway, I'm just saying, Jerry, Jerry was uh, was over the moon. So, as team mascot, uh, I think I've got the role to try and twist your arm and uh, when your contract finishes at Bora to get you back to Green Edge. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sam. Also, so yeah, tell Jerry thanks next time you see him. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, they'll be yeah, trying to get you to. Uh, when the sun tour fires up, <laughs> you got another bit well, of where you we can were change. talking about that before the race started. So I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll get look, we're trying to get it back. And you and you made uh, you mentioned that it'd be something sensational. So you're going to defend your title, mate. We haven't had one yeah. since you won it. So, you yeah, know. that's it. Oh, I mean, sun tour that's also just a sweet race, you know. Yeah, I've actually done it a few times now, and it's like, yeah, yeah it's just so much fun. I mean, you do like down under, it's also really nice. And then, yeah, you come to Sun Tour, it's like a bit of a different field, a bit of a different vibe, you know, a different course. And ah, I love doing it. Eh? I think I've done it like quite a few times now too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three mm, or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, every, every time it's just like really, really cool. Oh, that's so, good. Is it going to be back on? Uh... Well, we're working on it. We're working on it. Depends on what you want to do, this. mate. I think you could kickstart <laughs> any sort of revival no, no, now. Jerry, Jerry has said that he would, you know, he's been the major partner. It's owned by the Herald Sun, state government, mm. and they're all meeting together at the moment. So I'm, you know, probably but talking Peter about wants him here. at the Bakerits too. Bakerits. Well, of course, <laughs> we'll have him at the Bakerits at any time. I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, put it, make make sure it's a hilly course, and I might might make an appearance. Well, we'll, we'll bring back Port Arlington just for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, mate, you'll you'll have the Jai Hindley Bay Classic. But, but the Sun Tour, the Sun Tour will have a mountain top finish, a Jai Hindley finish in it for sure. So yeah. I guarantee oh, you that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, look, I know everyone's so keen to get you back to Australia. I'm, I'm thinking that you'll probably come back from the Worlds. It'd be crazy not to because uh, it's a pretty tough circuit. And, mm. uh, um, yeah, I, I can't see them not having you in the team. <laughs> I, I think yeah, that's well, – uh, no, Your form looks know, pretty I mean, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I put my hand up for it, so hopefully – We'll see what happens, though. But um, oh, I reckon, I reckon you might have a bit of a show of making the selection, mate. I don't yeah, think too much trouble there. But it would be nice. It would be really nice because I think, I think I do uh, Vuelta and then, and then 
yeah, I think Wells yeah. is around a week or a week and a half. Yeah, it's only a week like and a bit after. So you become yeah. a straight out, I reckon. I reckon. Yeah, and, and Wells, they is tell me... last, Wells is the last race with the team. So, uh, yeah, if I could finish at Wells, that'd be really nice. Then, yeah. you know, be a ticket yeah. back to the back to the continent. Which I, I, think, I think there might be a little bit of a celebration if you get to Perth, when you get to Perth, mate. Oh. I, I think that's in the, uh, that's on the cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been uh, – actually had a few people contact me about it. So, I mean, hopefully we can organise something. I think it would be really nice. Maybe like a maybe like a grand fondo or something where everyone can rock up and oh, I think it's a maybe set up, a, set up a yeah. sausage dessert with some snags at the finish or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting phone calls from, from, from people in Australia cycling and, and from Perth. Uh, only just after you won the damn race, or even before, actually, uh, uh, on the Sunday morning. Um, yeah. So that, that was already, all those wheels were already in motion, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. yeah Mate, you, awesome. you got so many opportunities now. I mean, you've got to do some sort of clothing brand now with, like, socks on centipedes or something. <laughs> like, and just really start making some serious bank off this stuff because, I mean, the pan's hot. Let you yeah, might yeah, as well pan, strike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta slip away though. No, I'll it. see uh see what I can do. It would be cool to bring out some uh some special kit, maybe some socks, you never know. That's it. Um <laughs> we got Mate, they'll, they'll fly off the shelves. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um we're gonna take a quick drinks break when we come back. We just want to dissect a couple of moments uh from the Giro itself because yeah. uh I'm sure if he he does so much research for all these guests and all their shows I, and yeah, I just thought I'd just uh, it's a lot of fun. I just thought, sorry, just before we throw to it, I just uh, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, with texting with Jai the other day, and as he knows, when I got back, uh, on the, I got back on the Wednesday night and on the Friday, uh, good mate of both Dan's and mine, uh, Ronnie Reed passed away, one of the legendary journos. So, uh, it's been a pretty tough week. There's a, a photo of him there, a, a real character, uh, one of the best journos. You know, anyone's produced, let alone Australia. But uh, we're going to, and we're going to, and Dan's put together a beautiful little tribute, which we're going to, because his funeral is tomorrow. We're going to show it. But at the end of this podcast, we'll, mm. we'll show that little five minute um, uh, tribute to Ron. Yeah, yep. yeah beautiful. beautiful. And guys, yeah, condolences. Eh? It's, uh, yep. yeah, it was really sad news. Like, yep. I really, really feeling for you guys. Hope you're falling up all right. Oh, he's a, he was a just great guy. What I what I never could understand with Ron is when you talk to him, he'd be real like, oh, how you going, Dan? And, you know, you get sort of one-word answers out of him. But then when he type, he's like this Picasso. And he'd sort of <laughs> weave this story and you're going, hey, hang on, what's going yeah. on, Roddy? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. these Amaz- two amazing. Yeah. 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 amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All right, we'll take... I was going to say, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, yep. uh, we'll dissect a, a little bit more of the Giro, so stay tuned. Yep, yep. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs. Semi-amateurs. And pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank. And these bars. This could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell. And thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours. And the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns and rides. Your new Lexus NX. 
Thanks again to Bike Exchange and, of course, Lexus of Blackburn and Jai. Uh, if he makes me show this photo every time, Lexus of Blackburn <laughs> Bay Crips. Uh, get down to lexusofblackburn.com.au. There's Ruby Rose with Gannon and Blake Quick. And any yeah. other nuggets of insight you got there, John? Oh, yeah, PSC Insurance, uh, great partners as well. But, uh, oh, look, yeah, but we, we, I know we keep saying it, but uh, Andrew Moore, great, a great guy. So if you're in Victoria and you're on a Lexus, go to them see, to see him out of Blackburn. Yeah, and also if you are in Victoria, go down and check out Mitchelton Winery, Johnny. Jerry's well, yes, fantastic uh, setup down there. It is amazing. I know you've been there, Jai. Uh, it is an amazing uh, setup. His new, new hotel, ride around the, the, with the little e tour e bikes that uh, Jerry brings in as well. Uh, cruise around and just amazing uh, um, hotel winery on the beautiful Goulburn River. I'm up there all the time. I'm actually heading up there on the weekend, getting back. Mm-hmm. Um, Got a cabin up there, not quite as palatial as Jerry's uh, palace there, but uh, I do regularly drop in for lunch. Yep, yeah, so get down and check nice it out. Setup, <laughs> oh, it's great. Now, Jai, obviously going into the Giro, you know, you go into those races confident, you've got a plan. Um, what was the general sort of plan going into the race? Like how were you sort of planning on tackling it? Because you, you guys showed your cards sort of halfway through where everyone's going, hang on, what's what's going on with Bora? Like these guys are attacking and they're sort of, they're not taking a backward step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we also had, we also had three leaders. So we had like a pretty, I don't know, pretty strong team. And we also had no one for the sprints. Like it was all in for GC. So uh, yeah, it was like very, yeah. The sole purpose was to get someone on the podium and uh um yeah we you know we we rode conservatively when we needed to and then took took the opportunities when when they presented themselves and i think that's i don't know that's how i like to race grand tours anyway you know like i really don't like to burn energy here or there i just you know when i know it's going to be a good time to to make time up or you know, go for a stage win or something, then I'm all in. But then when it's like, uh, you know, like a non GC day or something, then it's good to just take the, I don't know, take it a bit easier. Not, not like not focus or take it easy. I mean, you can't really take it easy ever, but, uh, yeah, just like, I don't know. Save as much energy as you can, and I think the, the, the team, team, the team stepped up. I mean, they really did ride a, as a GC team. But Kelderman mm. and you seemed to be the two that were going the best. And I was, I was looking at, it wondering, you know, which way I was going to go. But then Kelderman had his problem. I think it was about a week, stage nine, I think, when he lost ten minutes. And then that was it. That was then you were the leader, uh, and the whole team got. But there was one day I'd like, I wanted to ask you this: where? They didn't seem to have it sorted out correctly. There were a few up the road and you were unprotected. And I thought, what are they doing? Just one day. I think it was after about a week. You, you'll probably remember the day because I'm sure yeah. you would. Yeah. yeah, I think that uh, – I can't remember the stage. I remember – I know the stage you're talking about, though. Yeah, we, we had uh, – it was the it was the day we did Mortarolo where there was uh, – okay. there was – Lenny yeah. and Wilco had the road in the breakaway, and then there was me and Emu in the, I don't know, sort of like the GC group. That's right. It was, like, it was in the last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah I also right. remember that. And I also remember after that stage talking to the DSs and saying, they, I think everyone agreed, like, you know, it was nice to have a guy in the break, but ultimately it was a bit, I don't know, questionable because, yeah, we had – Emu and myself in the GC group, but no one else was there, you know. So we, if anything went wrong, then yeah, we were probably pretty screwed. But I mean, from that point on, you know, I said to them like, guys, like that, we we if we're going for GC, that really can't be happening anymore. And they also were saying that. So yeah, from that point on, it sort of just like was one hundred percent like into just supporting for the GC. I mean, we also had two stage wins in in the first sort of half of the race which really took the pressure off um and that was nice and obviously you always want to go for the stages but 
yeah, when you when you are riding for GC, then you you really do have to be like conservative with your energy on some days. And uh, yeah, I think from that point on, then we were really smart about it. You know, I think actually the whole race, the team tactics wise were they were pretty on point i think maybe that day you know it could have been better it still wasn't like disastrous or something uh no. and then we also had on stage 19 where we were chasing that was also a bit like yeah we we probably shouldn't have chased but uh actually that was the call off the riders not the ds's and yeah we also had a bit of a discussion after that but I mean, the good thing about the team was like uh, the DSs were never saying like, okay, today you do this, you do that, you do this. They came in with with the like, I, I don't know, openness and like ideas that they thought could work. And then, you know, if the guys agreed with it, then we went with it. Or if the guys had any other opinions, then, you know, everyone just said what they felt and then we went off that. It was like... It was a real open environment. You didn't feel like you were treading on anyone's toes or anything like that. It was it was actually just really nice to be a part of. Like every, everyone could say whatever they felt. If you know, one guy said like, "Oh, mate, I don't want you know uh, electrolyte in the bottles. I want water." Or if someone said like, "You know, this I want," then everyone listened to it, and you know, it was just it was just a good environment. And uh, I think that actually is what helped everything work so well is because everyone had a voice and everyone's voice got listened to. So, Well, it's I reckon, I reckon, well we, we've sorry, said man. that a few times, if you like, yeah. when you involve the team as shareholders, you know, yeah. cycling's a weird yeah. sport in that, like with DSs, it's not like a football pitch where you can see everything in front of you. Sometimes the cars are bloody a kilometre behind. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. yeah. if no, you don't the empower segments. the riders, yeah. Yeah. that must have been yeah. so refreshing, Joy, because you would have been in environments before where it, it, it isn't like that, you know, and you know, you're dealing with dictators like Dave Sanders. Dave over the ball. The stage that turned out to me, the stage that changed everything, where I thought, wow, you know, I, I'd already thought that you could win this and i thought you went really early and um i actually sent you a text but it was to your old number saying you can win this mate but anyway that would um, have been the difference too once you got that text from iffy you said right now sta- I'm no, on. stage 14 the t- torino stage Turin stage which mm. was one of the most dynamic stages i've ever seen it was just what a bike race and there was just it, it, there was no flat ground. It was up, down, turning. It was just you know, hectic as. But you mm. guys took it on. You you attacked. You, you you did an Ineos or a Sky. You just took control of the race. And that was the day, I reckon, the, the Giro changed for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Like it was, yeah, it was actually like a day that was months in, in planning, you know, like uh... – I don't know if you guys saw the team that we took to Milano to Reno, but it wasn't really a team for that specific race. It was like a a sprint. It was oh, yeah, okay. going to be a sprint finish, yep. and we took a bunch of climbers there. Uh, and Wilco and Gasper also went, and they actually reconned the Torino stage after the race. And uh, yeah, from that point on, you know, Gasper was saying like. He was saying at the start of the race, like, this is going to be the key stage. This is going to be a key stage. Like, just wait, just wait. And, you know, he also had, like, a big idea or plan that he had in his head. And he came to the guys with that. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty ambitious. You know, like, when your DS is like, yeah, we're going to blow the race up, like, halfway through. Then you're like, oh. Because it was a short stage, it was yeah, quite it a good stage as well. It was just yeah. all on, just all yeah. on. And, and, and you got Carapaz, but he uh, sort of isolated, and it was amazing. Just great stuff. Yeah, I think I think just the way it played out, it was yeah, it was perfect. You know, like the the plan wasn't I don't know necessarily it wasn't necessarily to like blow the race up, but just really to get all the GC guys isolated, especially Carapaz because he had such a like strong team and i think i think it worked so well because no one expected it to come from us and no one expected it to come that early and 
everyone sort of like got caught with their pants down, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. No, like, no, it's exactly it, I it was, loved yeah, it. it was good. And it was like just really perfect teamwork by the guys. Like everyone fully bought into it, everyone fully committed. Like we had guys doing absolute burners with 80k to go. Like yeah. when Aliotti pulled off after his turn, he was like done. And he still had yeah, I think like 70 or 60k or something to go. <laughs> like see so you at the bus, bro. Like <laughs> um but yeah, like I don't know, it just speaks volumes about the team. Like the guys just fully committed. And yeah, then we came through the the, the finish the finish line there. We had I think two laps to go of this circuit and yep. the group was tiny. It was really super small. It was only the GC yep. guys. And then yep. you know, some I think our mate was maybe one of the last guys to get back to that group. But yeah, like I said, so many guys got caught out and uh Actually, it was just a sick day of racing. Like, you don't really get many days like that, especially in the Grand Tour, where it's like pure racing from so far out. And that was just like really cool, especially because we were the we were the team doing the damage. You know, if it's if you're on the other end of the stick, then it's maybe not so nice. But when your team is committed like that and yeah, they just you know, really shake the tree, then it's really cool. Really cool to be a part of. Um, and what I, also, wanted... sorry, I think, no, I think no, that no. also just set the tone for, for the team, for the rest of the race. I think after that, everyone yeah. was like really confident and yeah. it was, uh, yeah, from that moment on, you know, everyone knew we weren't there to put socks on centipedes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really right. that but what, yeah. what I want to know is, you know, cycling is a game of poker at times. Mm. Um, and I heard Keenan had some insights the other week where he was saying that, um, you know, Carapaz, when he's sort of grimacing or whatever, he's feeling good. But when he's trying to put this face on that he's calm, he's actually struggling. Is it? Do you pay attention to facial expressions of these other guys and then you're like, I've read your, I've read your hand, mate. You've got to bust it straight. Let's go. Yeah, 100%. Also on that Torino stage... I made a big mistake because I was looking at him going up this climb and he was uh, for sure he was putting on a poker face, you know, like he was oh, not, not a poker face. Like he was putting on a real suffer face. And I was thinking like, man, he's on the ropes. He was also not like rolling through much. And I was like, well, oh, you know, Carapaz is really struggling. Maybe we've like caught him out here. And then, yeah. Like at the top the road. Of the road, he just <laughs> launched. And if you watch the video, I, I watched the replay. No one even thinks about reacting because he comes past everyone that quick. And I, I was like, man, like, what a what an amateur move by me. You know, I was thinking like, you know, this guy is is cooked, like he's looking super tired, and then he just comes flying past. And then oh, I was thinking like, well. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think he was going quite as well as what it looked when he first went because instead of just going, he kept looking mm -hmm. back and looking back and looking back, which you wouldn't have seen, but we were yeah. watching it on the TV and we we're watching this. And I, and I said to, to Vazzy, we were up the road, we were giving bottles on the last climb. And um, and I said, I don't think he – because uh, when he first went, like you said, he looked, oh, shit, he's got – you know, he's, they're not going to – See him again. Yeah, he yeah. Kept looking back. I said, "No, nah, he's not quite right. That is, he's not going as well as what uh, what he thought." No. Mm. Yeah, it was like interesting. It was also quite far to go, and you know this road that we—I don't know if you remember, but the road we did the Superga, the climb that they do in uh, Milano Torino, and then the road in between that and the and that final really hard climb was actually quite far and it was really hard to do. I mean, it was really hard to do in the bunch like of guys, but to do that on your own would have taken a lot of energy. And I think, uh, yeah, I think maybe, you know, his attack was really impressive, but I think maybe if he'd saved it for that final climb, then, you know, it could have been a bit different, but yeah, always easy to say like after the facts, you know? Yeah. So. Because the other concerning or what would have caused me stress if I was in your position is the amount of riders this year that have been 
pulled out because of illness. Um, mm. And then you had that leading into the final. It sort of flashed back to Stuart O'Grady when he won Paris Bay and he went off the front and he said, all I was thinking about is don't punch her, don't punch her. How much were you thinking in the last week, don't get sick, I don't want people coming near me, I don't want to be shaking hands of fans. How much did you have to sort of wrap yourself in your own little bubble to sort of make sure that you didn't get crook? Yeah, yeah, I was like shit my pants basically. <laughs> you know, especially these last, I think like the last three days of us, I think that's what was making me so stressed was up until that point, everything had gone really well. And yeah, like you say, if you have a puncture at a bad moment or a crash here or, you know, you get you wake up with like the flu or a stomach bug or something, that's like, you know, three weeks of racing down the drain. And mm. when you think of it like like that, it, yeah. I mean, I try not to basically because yeah, when you when you start thinking like that, then then you get really stressed out. And actually, I had this. I think I had a pretty good run in terms of punctures and crashes. I actually didn't crash, and I only had one puncture, and that day was stage was, eighteen. Yeah, it was the last sprint stage, I think, and. Day oh, JD, just inside three k to go. Yeah, <laughs> and that day, from that day on, I was a bit like more stressed. I would say because then I really had like this moment of like, well, I can lose everything here because of this, you know. And then when I started, yeah, like I said, when I started to think like that, then I was really stressing out. Uh, but yeah, in the end, it was all right. But this, yeah, also the last TT. You know, I had, I, had, I had people like, oh, you know, great ride. Like, you know, it's, you pretty much won the Giro, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay, yeah, I've got a good gap, but it's not over until it's over, you know. And I, mm. yeah, I really, you're right, you're right. Wow. for me, that, that last TT also was, yeah, it was stressful, but I'd also been in that situation two years ago in 2020. So I, yeah, actually the exact same situation where I went into the jersey after the second last stage and then I was doing the final TT and uh, yeah, I think I think the experience from two years ago really helped a lot because uh, yeah, you know, just to have that experience and yeah, I could just keep a bit more calm and stuff. But yeah, also to have the, the bigger buffer that I had this year was also much nicer than two years ago, like <laughs> half a second or whatever it was. You know? well, well, Carapaz surprised me that he actually did a really good time trial because I, the way mm. he, you know, you, you cracked him on, on the Saturday, I didn't think he'd be able to come back from that. And he did. He he, he ran a, a great time trial, as you did as well. Matter of fact, he he took risks on the last, he only beat you by about seven seconds. And if you had taken the same risk as him, you probably would have beaten him. But my question goes back to that stage 18 puncture. Because when it happened, I remember thinking, oh, well, they quickly said, oh, he's inside 3K. Oh, well, there's no pressure. But you mm. didn't know you were inside 3K. You weren't sure when you had the puncture. I remember you telling me later. because And so you've stopped. And that surprised me because I thought you would have had one of your teammates with you just ready to jump on his bike. Why didn't you do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was also pretty stressful like that whole stage actually was really hard might not have looked like it but uh i think we did this steep climb i think it was around oh maybe 50k to go or 45k to go yeah. or something like that to the finish from the top of this climb and yeah from the top of the climb to the finish it was just full steam like full gas and it was actually really hard just riding in the wheels on a straight line was like really hard. Like they were pulling full noise to get this, to get this break back. So yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a really hard stage and I actually used quite a lot of guys in the final circuits there because the positioning was just so hard. Like it was, you were either riding on the front or you were just, you know, fighting guys yeah, uh, in the in the bunch to hold your position because yeah, just just to ride like in the top twenty wheels at that point was like really hard and uh, yeah, I was basically burning quite a lot of guys just to keep me 
as far forward as possible. So everyone was, I think everyone was like pretty, pretty, you know, spent that day. And then, uh, yeah, then I came out of that corner and then, you know, hit something and then had to, had to change bikes. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think maybe they knew that I was inside 3k to go, but I, I was just like fully focused and in the zone that I had no idea. And when I pulled over, like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like the type of puncture or saying that you could just run on the rim, especially on that circuit. I had to, I really had to stop straight away. And, and then, yeah, I was like full, I was full <laughs> stressing, you know, and, and then I literally like looked up and then 50 meters in front of me was like the 2k to go banner. And I was just like, oh. Like, you know, I just lost <laughs> five years of my life. And I, I was also like, the car stopped, but no one was like really rushing. And I was looking in the window at Gasper and he was like behind the steering wheel. And he, I think he just went like this. He just went like 2K to go or something like that and just mouth the words. And I was like, well, the oh. thing is, that could have meant anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You wacker. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember looking into the car and I was like, I could have killed something. I was just full stress, full anger, like everything. And then I look up, I saw the banner. I saw like Gasper in the car, like easy. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think no. I've got uh, footage of Gasper from stage 20. I think this is uh, this is a penultimate day and he gets quite, quite, gets quite right, emotional. Guy, Ale, the last 700 meters and build the line, full gas yeah. and build the line, Jai. This is, this is where it's I'll really hit the line, him. Jai. You're fucking making history. <laughs> you have 42 seconds to land and Carapaz is, dro is dropped from Landa. So great job. Jai, you're fucking legend. Ale, Jai, Ale, build the line, man. <laughs> Actually, I've watched yeah, all this in history. History. He's one country proud of you. <laughs> oh, he's, you got him. This is where you got him. Yeah. Uh, it must uh, be great <laughs> watching these sort of scenes back where you see. Yeah, them. yeah, really. Great, man. Like, yeah. This, yeah, absolute legends, these guys in the car. And I think this, this especially just really shows like how passionate they were and how how com yeah committed they were but and like for me they the guys were doing everything they could you know and when yeah when it comes together and when it goes well and you see the guys reacting like that it, you really understand like how invested they are in you and it's that that in, that in itself is just really special like makes me makes me emotional to see him like yeah, that beautiful mm. Like it's, yeah. and I, I don't know. I don't think you get that in, in many sports, especially these days. Like mm. cycling is really just the yeah, greatest yeah, sport in the world. It, like, without that, oh, yeah. it brings those emotions out. Well, I was doing a bottle feed on the last climb, that little climb just before you, you went down and up the Marmalada. Yeah. And, uh, um, Do you offer Joy bottle, John? Sorry, buddy. Oh, I, oh, I've told Jai, bottle there, hey, mate. You said, want one? I said, After every you interview, John said, I've got a bottle for you if you need it, mate. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, never needed it, never needed it. But I was always there for you. But um, <laughs> I, I remember uh, we set up uh, at this spot and then the Ineos car pulled up and they dropped a guy off to, uh, uh, to, to feed the same place and then they were driving on to, to, to you know, another spot further up but uh ron ellingworth jumped out of the car come over and started because i go back a long way with ron and he yeah. said oh it's gonna be big you know big day i said yeah three seconds i said yeah it won't be three seconds tomorrow mate I said, no <laughs> i don't think it will i said yeah but you think it's going to be uh, one way and i think it's going to be the other oh he had a laugh and got in the car and drove off when yeah. i saw it the next day he just Put the head down and gave me a smirk, but he took it pretty well. He took it pretty well. But I remember yeah. you came past because uh, you know the break was up the road, and then you guys came past, and um, I remember looking at you, and you looked absolutely fantastic. You looked so uh, relaxed, and they're going bloody 
quick. Um, so that's that, that little rise just before you drop down and went up the, into the final, final fly. And I thought it was about, I think it was about, yeah, 16, 18, 20 k to go, something around that time. And uh, as they, they took off, we were then driving behind and watching it on, 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 the, on the telly. And I said to Vazzy, he looks good, mate. He's, he looks good. So we, we uh, yeah, it was great. We were yelling and screaming. We were a bit like your, your DS. We were high fiving and tears, and it was sensational. Just sensational. We've got a couple more live comments. Uh, Sally says, Class act by Jai. Congratulations and all the best uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, Tom Maloney says, Fantastic, Jai. Congratulations. You're just so cool. But do you speak English with other Aussies or more with Dutch, Germany, and Slovenians? Uh, do I do I speak English with other Aussies? Do you speak English with other Aussies or more? I don't. With... I don't know what Tommy was right because Tommy Tommy's an old racing mate of mine, and he speaks so <laughs> many languages. And he, well, he's broken so many bones recently. He's still <laughs> in, in plaster, so I think he's on. I think he's on medication. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I speak my Aussie English with the Aussie guys, but actually, when I'm with the Euro guys, I really put on my best English. You know, they probably um, don't proper. think it. I actually try and speak like my most sophisticated Queen's English. Yeah. Well, how, how's uh, German? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, good and hard. <laughs> nine. 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 You, got, you, speak good, you speak good Italian and you bit, a little bit of Spanish? Uh, yeah, Italian is like a work in progress and so is the Spanish. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I, will, I will really try and learn both, I think. Yeah. Uh, in G Town, mate, you just point at menus and dos a vessel, por favor. And they, yeah, you laugh at me. Uh, John Obed yeah, says, Congrats, mate. What are some of the messages you've received from other Aussie cyclists? Uh, obviously, Cadell's a big one now that uh, you join him as the only other Aussie to win a grand tour. Have you spoken to Cadell? Uh, I haven't actually spoke to him uh, directly since the race, but I've read like uh, a lot of the interviews he's done and yeah, it's really nice. And also, you know, from the from the other Aussie guys, you know, I've had messages off off heaps of guys, really. Like a lot of current a lot well, yeah, a lot of current Aussie guys and then a lot of the older ones too, you know, guys like Gero and uh mm. Rod McEwen and yeah, yeah, Cano in the past and it that that is like really special because like you're basically getting messages off and and support off guys that you know that I used to look up to, and it's not. There wasn't just like uh, I don't know one one guy that I just looked up to. Really, like uh, all the Aussie all the Aussie pros, like I had a lot of respect for. And uh, yeah, when you get when you get messages off these guys, and it's really special. And yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all I can say. You know, it's like really did you nice. did you have a go at Robbie for uh, the last day? He put on these. It was supposed to be a pink shorty jumps. It looked oh, like yeah. a pair of pink pajamas, like pajamas, or yeah. they were even pink. It's the most terrible outfit I've ever seen. Uh, I did, I did see that. I thought he looked pretty sharp. So, you're a bloody bullshitting now, Joe. He did look sharp. He looked bloody terrible. But anyway, all good. <laughs> uh, few more. Uh, Sam Roberts says you're star Joe, proud Aussie mate. Uh, Karen Jones, what an incredibly humble guy. What a great role, role model. Congratulations. Uh, Zippy, he says, awesome effort, Joe. I'm so happy you did one step better from two years back. Grand Tour winner. No one can take that away from you. Onwards and upwards. You know, you obviously so driven in uh, the sport and you've achieved so much already. But a lot of the guys at the top, mate, they reset their goals. What What is sort of the next box you want to tick now or you just take it? Sort of for Welter, see how we go and go from yeah. there. Oh, I mean, uh, hopefully, make the world stand. That'd be oh, nice. you'll be right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I um, uh, have I had like a bit of a break after the race, and and uh, yeah, I think all of July I will be training at altitude, and then and then yeah, the next. The next races will be San Sebastian and Burgos and the Vuelta normally. So, yeah, I actually, I really want to have a good crack at the Vuelta. I think it's 
pretty sweet race. I remember doing it in 2018 as like my first grand tour. So I haven't, I haven't done it since, but uh, yeah, it'd be really nice to go back there and have a, have a good crack. Like I say, but, um, well, I, have, I do have some bad news for you because uh, uh, Vazzy and I are planning to go to the Vuelta, so oh, you could no, get, yeah. get into well, it. That's <laughs> happening every day again. Eh? Give them more zingers, mate. <laughs> go uh, viral. We have to come up with a new one. I have socks on centipede. Mm. We have to come up with a new one. <laughs> Simon Knowles says, best cycling podcast ever. Congratulations to Joy Awesome Win and well deserved. Good on you, Nolsey. Carolyn That's says, congratulations for Mandra, Joy. Um, yeah, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> and Damien Spice says, "How did it feel to get revenge on Ineos?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I wasn't really like, yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it like that. But um, no, it, it was just nice to to win. I mean, especially after two years ago, like, yeah, it, it was like it, it was really brutal and like heartbreaking actually to to lose it like I did two years ago. Like for sure it was a surprise for everyone, including me that I was in that situation. But afterwards when the dust settled and, you know, I really had time to like think back on it. It was like, yeah, when, when you, when you come so close to something like that and then you lose it, it's like, yeah, <laughs> brutal, man. Like I said, and, uh, you know, actually I did. Yeah. I was thinking about that for a long time like mm. almost every time i stepped over the top tube on a bike i was thinking about that so yeah it just not so much like the revenge but just to to come back and yeah to go a step higher on the podium was like really really cool so We've restored your faith in the say, cycling it, karma gods, you know. It's, one for it's the amazing to, to to wear to wear the pink jersey, you know, to to, to and win it. That that's uh, staggering. But you've never had the the pleasure of actually riding in the pink jersey in the yeah. peloton. Yeah, I know. yeah. I was also <laughs> thinking that. Like, a bit do of you a feel like a failure, Joy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, a bit. <laughs> hey, maybe I'll go back next year and like finally pull the finger out. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just it's just interesting, isn't it? I mean, you, you you've won the damn Giro, but you haven't had a chance yeah. to ride in the peloton. Yeah, with, with it, the big it's here. really annoying because yeah, I mean, you only um yeah, I've got like two pink skin suits, but no. Oh, it just feels jerseys. like a waste. It's <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, I was going to. There was a, a couple of characters who rode their first Giro, uh, who I wanted to get your opinion on on their riding and their riding style and whatever. What, of course, first Matthew Vanderpol. Um, he doesn't like an easy day at all, so he just goes for it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's one of the one of the few guys racing now is like really changing the sport, you know, like he's, and for, for the better, like he's uh, riding really aggressive and just ripping up the, the blueprint basically, and just doing what he wants. And, you know, he's also got the engine behind it. So I think, yeah, I think actually as a cycling fan, you're probably, you're probably in some of the best years that you can be why well, in some golden years i think people look back at like the way that guys like him and and pog and van Arta racing and you know they're really like special riders and i think that in the combination with the accessibility of of uh being able to watch racing now is yeah it's like it's it's a great time to be a cycling fan i'll put it like that like I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm also a big cycling fan. I watch a lot of racing when I'm back home. I like, can't get enough of it. And yeah, it's cool. It's it's really cool. And yeah, I mean, also to race against these guys, it's like, it, yeah, it's a real privilege, I would say. And the other one who is, I think is going to be just as dynamic uh, is Gamay, Binium Gamay. Oh, I mean, yeah. The, yeah. the stage he, he won and the stage he almost beat Van der Poel in earlier, you know, stage, stage one, um, were amazing. But what an unbelievable way to have to leave the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's just like life, isn't it? I mean, you, 
you're riding high one minute and then it's all coming crashing down the next. But yeah, it was actually really sad to to oh, see man. that news and like see him be taken out of the race or something like that. You know, it's like, what the hell? But um, yeah, massive respect to him. I mean, he's really like a class bike rider. And I remember seeing him, I can't remember what race it was, but maybe maybe the last year or earlier this year, but I remember seeing him in the peloton and thinking like, man, this guy, like just the way he moves in the peloton was like really, really talented. You know, you could, you can yeah. tell. And uh, I think, I think for the sport of cycling, especially in Africa, it's like really awesome, really nice mm. to see. And uh, yeah, oh, I, I mean, I think I was like, among a lot of other guys who are really happy to see him take a win. Yeah, yeah well, just got a couple more live questions and then uh, we won't hold you up too much longer, mate. Uh, Great Divides yes, yes. wants to know, Albo giving you a call yet, mate? Obviously referring to the Prime Minister, Albanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I haven't, I haven't uh, heard from him, but yeah, you never know. Maybe catch up for a cappuccino or something back in uh, P-Town. <laughs> oh, you love it. You see him at the Worlds. You yeah, know, yeah, if you play yeah. cards right, you won't be a spectator. You'll be, be riding around with his bamboo bicycle. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Sam Roberts, they've already penciled you in, mate. Rainbow jersey would be nice. Uh, Doohig says, what would you like to go to the Worlds or who would you like to go to the Worlds with and which Aussies do you think suit the course at the gong? So now you're the leader on the road. You're not just going. Uh, who do you Who do you want around you? Wow, well, I man, I don't think I'm the leader, but uh, actually, yeah, it's, that's a really hard question. I think, I think when you look at the guys that we have in in the world tour or just in Australian cycling in general, it's really like a lot of talented guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just depends on who's motivated, and uh, I mean, I think a lot of guys have been motivated for it. You know, it's not like every day you get to do a, a worlds at home, so. I think it'd be a hard, hard uh, few decisions for the selectors to make. That's for sure. But mm. yeah, I don't know. I think, I think whoever goes and whoever wears the jersey will be, uh, yeah, they'll avert it, and I think they'll they'll do the country proud. That's for sure. Last uh, couple from me, mate. It must have been really, really special to have your family over there. I mean, you've been asked this a few times, but that mm. feeling of seeing your family you haven't seen for two and a half years as you cross the line. Uh, you are talking about the emotions seeing Gasper before, but you know, that, yeah, that must have been just next level. Yeah, yeah, it really uh, hit me right in the feels, you know, <laughs> uh, because yeah, I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen my mum and my, my dad for like over two and a half years. I think actually since uh, Sun Tour in 2020, I flew home for like less than, I think it was like less than 12 hours or something, and then that was the last time I saw them. Uh, and then I didn't see them again until they were in the arena. I had, um, yeah, the team got in touch with me and, uh, yeah, Bora wanted to fly them over and they did that and they organized everything, you know, like the accommodation, the rental car, that was like really special because I mean, my parents were anyway going to come over in towards the end of June for a month. So I was going to catch, catch up with them then. Uh, but just the way things worked out and the team wanting to bring them over for, yeah, it was like two or three days. If that, they were there for, it was really just like the weekend they came and, uh, and then, yeah, to have them like in the, in the arena there at the finish, that was like, you know, you, you couldn't ask for, I mean, I couldn't ask for like a better, I don't know, a better day. Like it's really just like a, fairy tale ending to the to the race and yeah also my girlfriend she was also in oz for uh i think two or three months so i also hadn't seen her for a while and then yeah to have all three of them there you know my biggest like my biggest uh support circle basically in the arena at the finish was like uh yeah, it's just like really special, man. Really like it's a cool trophy too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I um, yeah, I've got one of the second place ones, so I didn't really want another one of those. In the 
<laughs> oh, that's sensational. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was just the whole the whole last couple of days there was really special. And um, yeah, I'm really thankful for the team to to organize to bring them over. That was like a real classy move. And uh, they were, yeah, they were just blown away, you know, by everything. You can imagine like flying from Oz and then, mm. yeah, and then you watch the finish, like just like full emotions and then, and then, you know, this big party and then the next day you got to fly, they flew back. So it was like, I could imagine they were pretty smashed by the time they got back home, but definitely yeah. worth it. And yeah, they, they were like so happy to be there and I was so happy yeah, to have them do, surely Bora are going to deck your kitchen out with appliances and the full <laughs> kit caboodle. You back before, you're going to start milking this cash cow, mate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you going all in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. They're pretty nice kitchens. They look pretty... Oh, yeah. That's mid. top end, mate. Yeah. That's top yeah, end. Really nice stuff. stuff. Also, the hands grow stuff is really good. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, they make all the bits and pieces. They make all the utensils yeah. and everything, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mate. Yeah. You can start yeah. your own cooking show. Double whammy. Double yeah. whammy. <laughs> so, the, last one for me, mate. We all, I like asking this question to a lot of people we've had on the show, and that is, you know, what is the advice you want to give to people, either from a mentor that you had or along the journey to help, you know, people get through tough periods in their life? Like, you've gone through tough periods yourself and – You've achieved, you know, the ultimate success uh, at the Giro. What, what, what do you think is the best advice you can give the the viewers and listeners? Yeah, hard one and a deep one. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going through the going through the shit, then uh, I don't know. For me, it really helped to have like a a big goal and uh, something that I could really focus on and just take my mind off things um but yeah i think it's it's also really crucial to support yourself uh surround yourself with the with the right people like i yeah the people that i that i consider like in my inner circle they're really uh amazing people and people that i know i can lean on if i need to at any time and uh yeah I think I think your support your support network is almost everything, you know, and uh, yeah, just have the right people around you, and uh, also just have belief in yourself. I think um, it's also a big one. Like, yeah, if you really back yourself and believe that you can do something, and then you you know you put the work into that all the time consistently, then I think you know you can do whatever you want. So, fantastic stuff, yeah. mate. Good stuff. And then you want to? <laughs> Not trying to get emotional on set, mate. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's great, mate. That's it's good. it's it's such an amazing story, and uh, yeah. you know you've made so many people, you know, whether they're Australian or, or around the world, proud of of seeing just your progression. But I think the thing that makes most of most of the people that see your story proud is the way you conduct yourself, because it's what oh. you know there have been champions in the past that you see off the pitch or off the bike or whatever, you go, ah, it's just a shame that they're, they're not the full package, whereas you are the full package, you know. The way you conduct yourself off the bike is is almost at times as important as what you do on the bike, you know. Yeah. And uh, that I think that's the, the full package that, that make people really proud and, and you should be obviously proud of not just your results but how you conducted yourself as well, mate. So, nah, chapeau. Cheers, guys. I really appreciate that, eh? And I just want to thank you uh, for that whole month. Of, of, I mean, you were absolutely sensational every morning. Me and the you're hanging out in front of the bus. Oh, not at all. <laughs> not at all, mate. It's not every day you get an Aussie cycling legend asking you for an interview. You know? Oh, <laughs> hang on. Oh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> I, I, did I write that up there for you to say no? You didn't say no. <laughs> no, but, but I, I, it was special. It was an amazing month. I, you know, I do love the Giro. I, I, it was funny that uh, I, I finished in that same arena uh, 20, uh, 1981. What was that? 50 years ago or something. something really? 40 something years ago. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, finished the same place and at the same time trial. But um, I got to tell you, 
It was the most beautiful month. Vazzy and I traveling around, interviewing you every morning, staying in the bubble. We're in the bubble with with, with uh, Bike Exchange Jake, who looked after us really well. And it was just yeah, sensational. And you made it special. You, you put a smile on my face every day. I'd walk away after doing an interview with you and said, "How cool was that?" Because you, you just you just exuded that that um, that confidence and relax. Attitude, which was amazing, and uh, so so thanks, Bud. It was fantastic. Nah, no, no, thank you. I, I, I mean, yeah, also like the coverage and uh, you know the interviews and everything that you guys did. Like, yeah, it's really nice that people could, I don't know, see it from back home. You know, because uh, it's not always the easiest for for the folks back in Oz trying to watch the race and support everything and uh you know the, the more coverage it gets the the better i think so appreciate you taking the time out to make time for me yeah oh, right, mate. God. least we can do it's been absolute pleasure having you on the show mate i know everyone that's uh listening watching live uh are blown away but uh yeah that's to be expected because you as we said you're a champion on and off the bike mate and yeah keep doing what you're doing because it's uh it's only going to keep continuing these amazing stories. So, thanks. Very uh, much, enjoy a bit more sort of R and R, and we'll catch up soon, mate. <laughs> yeah, gonna, we're just going to show the the, the the little Ronnie Reed uh, uh, tribute. But if you can hang around at the end of that, we'll we'll have a a, a quick goodbye, even if it's after the yeah yeah. Oh, sounds great. Sounds All right. Great. Well, here's All the right. tribute to our great mate uh, Ronnie Reed. Ron, I didn't know you as well as many people paying tribute to you today, but one thing's for sure, you're a bloody great journalist. You saw it, you read it correctly, you wrote about it. And just by the fact you were writing, you sold many newspapers because it was you. Uh, I'm so saddened that by today, of course, it's inevitable for all of us that we will meet again. And when we do, we'll have a beer together and we'll talk about old times. Rest in peace and my kindest regards to you too. Today we're talking to Ron Reed. Ron Reed. Another is, great Australian. He's a well, he's a legend in the uh, world of sports journalism. He uh, has been with the Herald Sun for something short of 50 years, not much short. Uh, started off as a country boy. Let's welcome Ron Reed. Good day, Ron. Good morning. Morning, Leon. Morning, Sam. More morning. affectionately known as the Hound. <laughs> the Hound, that's <laughs> right. Well, who gave you the name The Hound? Oh, look, it's lost in the mists of time, but I think Percy Jones had a bit to do with it, uh, the old <laughs> carbon Percy. footballer. Yeah, I lived with Perth for a while, which uh, it says as much in the book, but uh, uh, I think he uh, was responsible for it many, many years ago. Was that, was that in Rockley Parade in South Yarra, or did you go to Richmond, the... Uh we're just, no, we were just no. We were in Turak at one stage until we got kicked out of there. Well, you got kicked out of a few places, <laughs> and, and I didn't want to raise them. But uh, <laughs> of all your interviews, Dennis Lee was difficult. But you had this love hate thing with Shane Warne. You always said Shane Warne was your your greatest interview and the guy you wanted to be with most. And yet you had a love hate relationship. You had difficult times with Shane Warne. He didn't get along all that well with the media in general for, for quite a while. And there, there came one day when uh, I, got, I got a call at breakfast, we were up in Brisbane, and uh, uh, and was I coming to training? And when we got there, um, the media manager locked Warney and I both in the umpire's dressing room and said, now, you guys sort yourself sort of out, out yeah. <laughs> and knock on the door when you're finished. So... Um, so we did that, uh, Warney, and uh, after a while we'd both run out of you things both. to say. And I said to him, Warney, look, you're not about to stop playing cricket for Australia anytime soon, and I'm not going to stop writing about it. Uh, we'd better draw a line draw in the line. sand. And he looked at me and said, yep, yep, let's do that. And so after that, it was, so you're on good it terms was much now. smoother going. We're on terrific terms now, yeah. He uh, invited me round to his place in Brighton, about a year ago when I asked him, I told him I wanted to write about all this. Hound, what's the biggest story you wrote? I think the one I enjoyed most was um, uh, revealing that Alex Tisalenko had found a brother that he never knew he had. Which is in the book, by the Uh, way. It is. War Games. Mm. His mother had given this uh, baby up for dead when she was in a prison camp during the war and uh, spent 
the next 40 years or so, wondering what had ever happened to him, assuming he'd been killed by the Nazis or who knows what. Anyway, the guy surfaced and uh, Alex was a very emotional reunion. In a big reunion, I yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, you've also got, you've acquired a, uh, a great love for cycling. You know, you covered uh, Melbourne and Wanderer, which is a big affair, and then also, I think, six or seven uh, Tour de France. Where'd that all emanate from? Uh, I, I, I had a passing interest in it, and I was, I was, I've always liked the big events, and the Tour de France was one that was sort of on the horizon, and then um, I, uh, I got talking to our mate, uh, John, Trevorrow. John Trevorrow, about it. And he said, well, look, I go every year and uh, we have a good time, so why don't you come? So, on one of his Kentucky tours. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for, I, <laughs> I must say. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I'll call the Takawi tours. <laughs> <laughs> now, we haven't got a reservation here. Oh, you have for Trevorrow for five? No, no, sir. <laughs> that's, that's next month. <laughs> yeah, you never knew where you were living or eating or drinking or, or anything. But, but look, they were terrific fun, and yeah. uh, I, I, I went on three or four or five of them, and uh, and eventually uh, our other mate Jerry Ryan started going as well, and we know that that led to the formation of the uh, Green Edge team. Green Edge team, and yeah. a victory, yeah. Australia's first victory in the tour too, yeah. which is fantastic. Firstly, condolences to Ron's family. He was a great journalist, but also a great guy. Um, I had the pleasure of chatting with Ron on many occasions through my career, whether it be the Tour de France or Olympic Games. Um, he was very well respected in the cycling community and he was an honest and, and trustworthy human. Uh, he was a great big gentle giant and um, you know, he always had a smile and a, and a wry little smile and trying to get some inside information out of you for one of his great stories. Uh, rest in peace, Ronnie. Yeah, that's a very special tribute to uh, Ron Reid. As we said, absolute legend and uh, fantastic journalist. And, yeah, he's going to be missed. And it'll be a big send-off tomorrow at the uh, yep. Caulfield Race Course. So, um, oh, look forward to this. Yeah. Really yeah, so uh, that wraps a massive episode. Jacinta says, absolutely blown away. What a fabulous podcast. Thanks, Dan, John, and Jai. So uh, there's plenty of uh, positive comments coming in, Jai. So... As we said, mate, you're an absolute superstar. And uh, if anyone wants to get behind the show, as we always say, youtube.com forward slash the detour podcast. When are we going to be back, Iffy? We don't know. Uh, no, we'll do one. We'll do one next week. I'm heading up to the Gambia on the weekend and uh, um, we'll work on our, our next show. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, John. There's a lot going on. I mean, we've got some great bike racing. We've got Dauphiné, uh, exciting stuff. I was going to talk about some of that. With, nah, we too late. I was just saying, we'll, do, we'll dissect that. The Women's Tour of Britain is going on at the moment. Fantastic. Alex Manley, uh, second in the stage last night and third uh, overall. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about all of that stuff uh, next week. All right. Thanks again, Jai. There's I think it's about the fourth time I've said thanks and wrapped up. But <laughs> you definitely thanks, go now, really mate. <laughs> thanks, really mate. Nice. Good no worries, you. mate. Speak yeah. soon. Cheers, guys. This is the winning ride of the Tour de France.